Buongiorno everyone. I'm Alessandro Borga, the Italian specialist at Wilson Daniels. Thanks again for being with us today. Today we go back to Valdo Biadene in, uh, in the land of the Prosecco region, the original land of the Prosecco region, where we're going to connect to Gianluca Bisol. Where he is going to lead us to a tasting of all the Bison lines of Proseccos. The Bison family goes back to 1542, producing Prosecco in the region of Valdo Biadene. And today we're going to be tasting all those and presenting all those five wines. Last time we were in the vineyard sp uh, speaking about the region and the history of the winery. Today we're going to be a, f a full dive on, uh, on the Prosecco along with Gianluca. Let me connect with Gianluca. Hi Alessandro, hi everybody. Ciao Gianluca, come stai? Benissimo, grazie, thank you very much. Sorry for this delay for the connection. And, uh, Not a problem. So we start again with the old system. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Not a okay. problem. We're gonna, we, we, we always find a solution. Okay. So uh, thank you everybody for coming. It's a pleasure. It was a pleasure to speak uh, with uh, my uh, customer, my, my people that uh, are opinion leader in the wines, the, the, all the team. Uh, thank you very much for your support. Thank you. So I'm Gianluca Bisol. I'm the president of uh, Bisol 1542. We are wine growers in uh, Valdo Biadene since 1542. I'm the 21st generation and uh, my family uh, own a vineyard in the historical uh, part of Prosecco. You know that uh, Prosecco is uh, a, a region that today is so successful that uh, in every part of the region and also in the region near Veneto, uh, people plant a lot, a lot of Prosecco in the flat area. But uh, we are original from the historical and the historical part of Prosecco is only in the hills. So today, the, in the market, there are a lot and a big number of Prosecco produced from the flat area. More or less are 500 million bottles produced in the flat area. But the, in the historical area, there are only 100 million bottles and uh, is uh, all produced in the hills. So the quality is uh, extremely di di different because uh, in the hills we have a particular kind of soil, we have a, a, a wonderful exposition, we have uh, a, a, also a very steep inclination of the vineyard, everything is uh, done by hand, so there is a, an attention uh, to each one of the vines that are in the vineyard, something that uh, in the flat area is not because in the flat area of uh, DOC, the normal Prosecco uh, is only by machine. So we own uh, 21 plots for a total of uh, 55 hectares. And uh, this is a lot in the original area because uh, normally the, the medium property of Binier is only uh, 1.5 hectare per, per person, per, per owner. And, mm -hmm. uh, we, my family, own 55 hectares. And uh, we are a small part of the production in Battle of Prosecco because the major part of the winery buy the wine and transform in sparkling wine. And a little part of them buy grape and transform in wine and sparkling wine. We start from the vines and we finish in the bottle. So every day when we, when we are in front of the vines we are thinking at the final result of the battle so we we are this small part of the production of prosecco only five percent of the producer that you can see in the market uh, own the vineyard or work in the vineyard the 95 percent buy wine or or a grape so is a always a good prosecco but not uh, the same uh, result, result that you can have if you work uh, directly with the vineyard, like we do and like other family like us do. 
And we do this uh, since 1542, so for 500 years, more or less. And uh, thanks to this long tradition, uh, my family buy piece of land in, in the hills, uh, in the best position of the hills, uh, generation by generation. So today we have this uh, uh, very interesting uh, exposition in the vineyard in the highest uh, hills. Uh, because uh, never we buy a, a piece, an acre of vineyard in the flat area because uh, uh, we, we want to create uh, the best possible Prosecco in the world. So we work in the vineyard. We uh, do this uh, um, personally with uh, also a lot of people with us. Uh, we go inside the vineyard. We decide every year how to cut the, the how long to cut, cut the vines uh, because we want to, to have a, a, a little a smaller production to emphasize the, the, the typical flavors of Prosecco. And my grandfather, uh, Jayo, decided 70 years ago to select uh, our 21 plots uh, in five different kinds of soil. So in our 21 plots, there are five different kinds of soil. And this, this is the reason why we decide to produce a collection uh, suggestion of my grandfather, Jayo, of uh, a five different Prosecco Superiore. And uh, it's very interesting to taste the Prosecco from different kinds of soil, because uh, the, the grape of Prosecco, the Glera, is uh, one of the most sensible grape uh, in the world. So if you put uh, the Glera grape in, in a kind of soil, you have a result. If you put uh, the, the Glera grape in the same kind of soil, but another altitude, you have another result. If you put uh, the glera in different kind of soil, you have different kind of result. And this is a very interesting because uh, uh, you can match the prosecco superiore that you obtain from this different kind of soil to different kind of dishes. So you have a lot of opportunity during the day to to propose. Uh, the Prosecco Superiore from different situations, different occasions. And this is the reason why Prosecco is so successful. Because uh, if you think that uh, the history of Prosecco is uh, very long because our minimum five centuries, but uh, the success is very recent. Very, uh, I think it's start uh, to export uh, in the 80 years before it was selling only in, uh, in Italy, in region like North Italy. And now it's so successful in the world that it's selling in more than 70 countries in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in the uh, UK, I remember when I started to work in, in, in the winery, uh, after two years, I, I went to London to, to try to sell my Prosecco. And everybody in 1989 tell me, sorry, there is no market for this wine. Nobody knows this wine. Sorry, it's good, but nobody wants this wine because it's, they drink champagne. Yeah. Wow. I so, sounds like prehistory. Yes, exactly. So I, I convinced that in 1989, three Italian restaurants in London to pour my Prosecco like welcome drink. And after a few months, the people ask, I want this wine. Where I can find this wine? So become a, a so incredible success. And uh, after we went to U.S. in New York, we, we start. Uh, and many, many friends of, of mine in New York tell me, I remember 30 years ago, I, I was looking for your Prosecco and it was very difficult to find. There was no any Prosecco in the wine shop. And now you can find uh, five, ten different brands of Prosecco in the wine shop. This is the reason of the success of Prosecco, because easy to drink all the day. Uh, when you start to drink, it's difficult to stop to drink <laughs> because it's uh, so um, social, so easy to drink this wine uh, uh, any time in the day. Uh, yeah. And so the price also is, is a very perfect uh, mm -hmm. quality pre uh, rise. Right. Uh, so this is the reason. But inside this big world of Prosecco, we all have a mission, a clear mission. And... Uh, we want 
to create, uh, thanks to our vineyard, thanks to history uh, of my family, 21 generation, we want to create uh, the best possible Prosecco in the world. We have the best vineyard, we own 21 plots in the best hills, uh, five different kinds of soil, so we, uh, every day we work to, to improve, to, to, to do the best uh, in, in the vineyard, to reduce the quality and to emphasize uh, to reduce the quantity and to uh, emphasize the quality. So today, with you, uh, I have uh, five different Proseccos. Uh, to be precise, four different Proseccos, because one is a Rosé. Rosé sure. at the moment, and uh, we started with, with this, Rosé at the moment is not a Prosecco, because uh, uh, until... Uh, uh, well, mm, 19 harvest uh, wasn't possible until 2020 harvest it wasn't possible to uh, to do a prosecco rosé but from the next harvest 2020 will be possible but we try we try uh, with uh, different cuvée we mm -hmm. use pinot noir glera and uh, merlot and this is a very interesting result that I want to taste with you sure. and after we taste the prosecco doc the Gio Prosecco DOCG Superiore, because the Superiore is the important uh, name to connect with Prosecco. If you want to, to drink the, the Prosecco from the original area, you have to ask Superiore Prosecco, not Prosecco e basta. So right. you need to remember Superiore. A, terms. And, if, and even better if you say Valdobbiadene. Valdobbiadene is the highest uh, quality yeah. of the three micro areas of the DOCG Superiore Prosecco. Yeah. So. And uh, after we will taste the credit, that is a single soil Prosecco from clay soil. And at the end, uh, we will try the Cartizza, that is the king, the king of the world of Prosecco. Yeah. So, speaking about Prosecco, you know that there is Prosecco DOC, the basic Prosecco. There is the Prosecco Superiore, DOCG, mm -hmm. Oracle Hills. And there is the Cartizze, so three levels of uh, Prosecco. Every six bottles of Prosecco, there is only one bottle of Prosecco Superiore from the mm -hmm. history. And every 600 bottles of Prosecco, there is only one bottle of Cartizze. And uh, last but not the last, every 1,000 bottles of Prosecco, there is one bottle of Bison. So very rare. <laughs> yes, yes. After with the Rosé, Gio, Gio is the nickname of my grandfather. Jayo was the man, most important man in the history of the winery because he lives uh, during the two world war. So he had to rebuild the winery and the vineyard after the second uh, world war. And he was the man that decided to create uh, the single soil Proseccos. So right. thanks to him, we have five different soil of Prosecco. But speaking about the rosé, this is, uh, as I said before, a, a cuvée of uh, Pinot Noir and uh, Merlot and Glera. And this is a Charmat. So you know that Charmat is a, a, a system to produce the sparkling white without uh, uh, leave the, the bottle with the yeast for a long time. Not for a saving in the price, but because if you leave uh, this kind of grapes uh, with aromatic flavor, with the yeast for uh, one year, you lose a lot of original flavor because the yeast try to put his own uh, flavor on the on the sparkling wine. So, uh, Charmat method or Martinotti or Italian method. This is these are the three names that you, we can you can use for the the Charmat method. Uh, is a method that is perfect for a grape like a Glera and for all the uh, um, by the wines that have a lot of uh, original flavor, like yeah. Prosecco. It, it emphasizes the, the aromas of the grape. Exactly. No, it, rather than the secondary characteristic. I recently uh, um, learned that actually Martinotti was the first person who invented the method, but Charmat patented it. So the people know it as a, as a Charmat method, but it was Martinotti that, the Italian. Yeah person that actually uh, um, created the first, uh, for the first time, this method of production. So. As there is this, uh, always this uh, competition from uh, Italy to Italy France. France. Yeah. yeah. 
they have a longer history, but they say that they, they have uh, a longer history. But this is a nice, uh, a nice uh, competition. It's, it's, it's always it's, it's always a, a constructive competition. It's for oh. making better wine. So, this is for the quality, exactly. Yeah. And uh, inside the Western Edge, we are all together, France and Italy. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, the rosé, like uh, you can see the, the color mm -hmm. is so beautiful. It is a, a light rosé. We leave the grapes uh, uh, with the skin for 12 to 15 hours, not more. So only to bring a little bit of the mm -hmm. color. Yeah. And during these 15 hours, you, we bring uh, a lot of flavor from the, the Pinot Noir. Right. But also the glera, that is a small part of the cuvée, take a, an interesting effect in this. So the, the, the glera uh, percentage like varies with, depending on the vintage. Mm -hmm. Even though, I mean, this is supposed to be like a non-vintage wines to really keep the, the quality and the, the, the tasting profile very consistent. But yeah. I guess every year, depending on how uh, the, the vintage goes, can be a little bit more or a little less. So. Right. Exactly, Alessandro. Is uh, normally is uh, around the ten percent of Glera, mm -hmm. fifty percent of Pinot Noir, and forty percent of Merlot. Merlot. The the flavor is very interesting because it is rounded, is creamy, is uh, complex, uh, is full, and uh, in the mouth is uh, again creamy. Is a is a brut, so mm -hmm. around uh, eleven gram of sugar. Right. Which is kind of at the higher spectrum of uh, brut, because right yeah. on twelve it starts the dry, the extra dry. So, exactly extra dry. Yeah. Exactly. And the mouth is very creamy, very easy to drink, very uh, nice to drink all the time, from uh, eleven in the morning, starting the the social uh, event uh, with people meeting. Uh, and after also like uh, an aperitif, or if you want, you can also drink with uh, fish. A lot of fish is perfect. Mm -hmm. Just the dish, pasta. I, I find it very enjoyable with uh, some uh, prosciutto slices, uh, some grana padano, like some aged cheese, yeah. with the, the cherry flavors, like really emphasize the, uh, the, the old flavors of the cheese and the prosciutto. I mean, that's, that's a typical kind of Venetian also way of making aperitivo, right? Exactly. Here we have a different kind of salami and suppressor, more young, more older, more dry, more and more sweet and humid. It's fantastic. This yeah. is a wonderful connection in terms of, of, of quality, in terms of, uh, of color also, because it's the same color of, of the, this kind of food. So going back one second to Prosecco Rosé, which uh, has been given the good to go uh, from the consortium. Uh, basically, a week ago, I saw the news where is now they're allowed to release uh, the Prosecco Rosé, the producers, yeah. correct? So first yeah. of all, Prosecco Rosé is only allowed in the DOC area. So we're not talking about the DOCG. So this is only exclusive of Prosecco, not sure. Rosé. Um, and then tell us like why, how the consortium was able to kind of change the regulation in order to allow... Uh, the production of a rosé wine in Prosecco, which until last year basically was not av available, it was not even uh, it was not allowed. So yeah, it is an interesting uh, evolution. Uh, it's a mental evolution because uh, if you, if you think that uh, from ever the Prosecco can use inside uh, his cuvée maximum fifteen percent of other kind of, of wines like. Uh, Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, Chardonnay, Bianchetta Pereira, but can also use Pinot Noir since the long time. So why use the Pinot Noir only in white? So the question was, uh, the people say at the beginning, oh, uh, Prosecco Rosé, not possible. Why not? Because uh, you can use the Pinot Noir. If you use the Pinot Noir in red, like in Champagne, you can mix the, the Pinot Noir with the, the the other white uh, varieties, uh, you can obtain the, the rosé, mm -hmm. only mix. Uh, and so um, the discussion was a long discussion for years. Uh, at the end, uh, uh, the decision is uh, to create uh, this Prosecco rosé, respecting, totally respecting the original, the original rules. Nothing mm -hmm. is changed in the right. mix 
of kind of grape. So it's changed only the opportunity to live with the skin contact for a few hours, the Pinot Noir, to obtain the, the red color that is perfect for mix with yeah. a glare, I obtain the rosé. So it's, I think, an evolution, natural evolution, uh, that is uh, present in many other denominations in the world. Right. For the moment, will be only in the DOC area. So in the most uh, basic uh, proposal of Prosecco, the most successful also, because uh, DOC is uh, five bottles, every six bottles of Prosecco selling in the world. But uh, I'm sure that in the future, this uh, can be also something that uh, will be in the, in the original area, in the historical area, because uh, there are very good positions of Pinot Noir in the area. For example, uh, 15 years ago, I had uh, the first visit uh, in uh, Prosecco area uh, of uh, Tom Stevenson, that is considered the guru of Champagne. Mm -hmm. He never for my invitation to the hills of uh, Valdobbiadene, and uh, when I convinced him, uh, we was together in Venice for the, you know, there is the film, the film Venice. We was to come with me by helicopter uh, from Venice to Valdobbiadene. And uh, from Venice to Valdobbiadene in helicopter is only 12 minutes, minutes, so very, very near because we are 50 kilometers from Venice. And uh, he mm, accepted my invitation. And when we Right over the hills of Valdobbiadene and uh, Follina and Conegliano, he tell me, for my opinion, this land is perfect also for Pinot Noir. Hmm. The, the, one year after, I planted the Pinot Noir in a portion of uh, hmm. uh, eight hectares. And uh, this was true because uh, after the vinification, we, we saw uh, an incredible quality. And so, we use it this for in white for the cuvee of the prosecco. You know the fifty, as I say before, fifteen percent you can use in you know, mm -hmm. So Tom Stevenson is a part <laughs> of, uh, of the this, reason why uh, you're Pinot Noir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, let's Good. move on. Let's go now to the proseccos. So start from now, the yeah. We go to taste the Jayo, the name of my grandfather. Uh, Geo DOC. Why DOC for Bisol? That is uh, a, a family that produces only in the DOCG area, in the Prosecco Superior Historical Area. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, as uh, you know, in the history, uh, all the, 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 the grapes that are uh, near the historical area uh, have uh, uh, called the not Prosecco Superiore or Valdobbiadene, but Prosecco DOC. And uh, in, uh, some years ago, about uh, 14 years ago, 13, we buy a, a vineyard in the in hills that is uh, in the border of the Prosecco Superiore. Uh, that is always in the hills like uh, Prosecco Superiore, but uh, for only for a question of history, decision of border, you know, there is always a border, no? Everybody is decide. Uh, said, why I'm not inside, but uh, yeah. someone has to decide the border. Mm -hmm. And I this uh, wonderful hill, and we start to produce uh, this Prosecco uh, DOC. And, uh, and now we continue because uh, uh, in the market there is also a request of Prosecco DOC. And so we do this uh, Prosecco Brut DOC. But we are not that area, but from a hill near the historical area. Yeah, which actually makes it a, a great competitive advantage that you have because from one side you have a, a beautiful product, beautiful grapes that you can make a, a great wine from it. At the same time, you can make you can uh, propose it at a lower cost because of the of the fact that it's outside of the OCG area. So it's a it's a great competitive advantage that you have, and that's why the G or DOC is so successful and is delicious and successful. So exactly, exactly. The, the the quality and the price are perfect, really perfect. You see the, the bubble very fine, very, mm -hmm. very fine. And 
color is a straw yellow. And the flavor is a typical flavor of Prosecco Superiore, but uh, with a, a lower intensity, honestly, mm -hmm. because Prosecco Superiore in Valdobbiadene is uh, in highest and more stupid hills. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the result is uh, uh, better, a little bit better. But this is incredible because you can find a lot of fruit flavor like apple, peach, mm -hmm. banana. And this is 100% Glera, right? 85%. 85% Glera, okay. We always use a little bit okay. of Chardonnay or Pinot Noir. Okay. And uh, the flavor is uh, intense and well, well balanced with the indifferent influence of the kind of fruit. There mm -hmm. are also some influence of apricot and the white flower. White flower, yeah, I was about to say. Yes, that's typical of uh, your Proseccos. Um, and the level of sugar is still brute. We are here at about, it's the same as, as the rosé, it's about 11 grams of sugar per liter. Exactly, 11 yeah, grams. So it's right, uh, right at, the, at the highest level of the brute before going yeah. to extra dry. In so. general, Prosecco need a good sugar residual. Mm -hmm. it can stay normally also in the brute or extra brute, but you need a little bit of uh, sugar residual because, uh, as you know, all the original flavor need uh, sugar to emphasize the, the flavor. The right. sugar is an um, amplifier of, uh, of amplifier, the yeah. fire, yes, of the original flavor. So and the, the yeah. whole pickle to, to start uh, mm -hmm. the lunch or the dinner or perfect also for uh, the Bellini, the famous Bellini. Right. Right. Don't destroy the, the cocktail with a bad Prosecco, please. No, exactly. Cocktail, exactly. you have to use the best ingredient, like, like everything in the world. No, for sure, for sure. And, the, and both uh, this wine and the rosé are retailing for between $12.99 to $15, $15.99. So it's a, great, uh, it's a great price right at the right spot where you find a beautiful uh, Prosecco uh, for, that over delivers for the price. So. Yes. So we can go now in the historical area. Yep. Uh, we can uh, open the bottle of uh, Geo Prosecco Superiore Brut. Always a Brut, but from uh, the historical area of Valdobbiadene. Yeah. Geo, born in uh, 1999, the first bottle of Geo, when uh, we decided to dedicate to my grandfather Geo a special cuvée for him of Prosecco Superiore. Uh, Geo, you remember, is the, my grandfather that decided to separate the different kind of soil. And the, but we know which was uh, the, the preferred soil for him. And so we created a cuvée with the three soil that he preferred. So we, Geo, Prosecco Superiore, is a cuvée of three different hills in Valdobbiadene with three different kind of soil. One, Hill is with the sand soil, and the other one is uh, with uh, uh, the clay soil, and mm -hmm. another with the morenic soil. Mm -hmm. Mix of the three kinds of soil that uh, after we will try also the, the crater that is a clay soil, single soil, and after we will try the cartita that is a sand single soil. Right. The, the, the influence of these three kinds of soil is interesting because the sand soil gives a lot of original flavor of fruit, flower, is very rich in terms of, of uh, original flavor, aromatic flavor. The clay soil gives a, a good acidity, more flower, and a, a, a very good body. And the, the morenic soil is very, is very interesting. Uh, the morenic soil gives uh, minerality. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a perfect uh, combination, and uh, this is, was the preferred soil for my grandfather. And we but, also can, can say that this is a wine that you've been making since like 1999, as you said, but has not come to the U.S. market up until a year and a half to two years ago. Uh, so Wilson Daniels, we brought it to the market for the first time because traditionally in the U.S. market, there was only the DOC and there was no Prosecco Superiore. So, so you start to bring this that uh, is so successful in Europe, in, uh, in Italy, in the U.K., 
and uh, France also in Switzerland. And uh, it's a big success because uh, Jayo now is uh, selling the, um, with a, a lot of an increase in, in, in all the, the market. You, think, you have to think that introduced in 1999, uh, now every one bottle of Bisol, we sell four bottles of, uh, of Prosecco uh, Jayo. It's great. We can see also the trend of the market going towards better Proseccos and, uh, you know, uh, getting to know a little bit more about the quality of Prosecco. Yeah, exactly. Oh, here you can uh, find uh, really the incredible effect of the kind, different kind of soil. Because mm -hmm. I can as inside is uh, uh, the single soil of, of uh, uh, morenic uh, soil mm -hmm. is uh, in uh, Relio, one of five uh, soils collection. Yeah, uh, and find uh, a bit of uh, flower taste of the, crate. and I find also the the, um, the fruity the fruity taste of this. Uh huh. Also here, very, very, very fine, fine bubbles, because we do a second fermentation very slowly at a low temperature. So the, the bubble starts a little bit, a little bit, very slowly. So compared to the DOC uh, that you, we just uh, tasted, um, what are, I would say, the main characteristic that the DOCG brings to the table uh, that would I would say would it, legitimize also the, the price, which is a little higher. So what are the things that you think are going to be key in showing the difference between the DOC and DOCG? Uh, at the flavor, uh, very big Long range. or wide. More. Okay. Yeah, flavor. But in the body, in the, in the mouth, uh, is more rich, more, more rich, more long, a good acidity, very crispy. So mm -hmm. for the pairing or the food, there is no competition for sure. Drinking outside the, the lunch or dinner can be good also for single DOC, but for pairing the food, this is the best. So like for aperitif and for cocktails, it's great to use DOC and for food ah, and wine pairing, DOCG. Super exactly. good. Super good. Mm -hmm. So in the mountain is, uh, is always a brut, is around 10 grams of sugar residual. Yeah, we will last, yeah. Extremely with a good acidity that uh, clean very well, crispy, vertical. It is a, a wonderful combination of uh, the influence of this kind of soil. Mm -hmm. So now we go up and up <laughs> in the top of the hill. So we go to, to taste the, the crede. Crede is a clay soil, 100% clay soil. This kind of, of soil uh, give a special uh, Prosecco for aperitif because this kind of soil give us, give us the opportunity to go down a lot with the sugar residual. We arrive at 7.5 gram per liter. It is very low for a Prosecco. You, as I said before, Prosecco need the sugar residual. So when we go so down, normally, if you don't have a special uh, soil like uh, uh, this hill of uh, clay soil, you lose the body. Of Prosecco, right, and so we we go we go with this uh, uh, at this level of sugar residual, and we obtain a Prosecco superiore that is also very rich in the body. This is perfect with uh, the oyster, for example. Okay, we, we are leaving the JO line, and we're now getting to the Bisol line, which is the, the the historical line that your grandfather made uh, before you started making the JO. We will start with the crede and after the cartice. Mm -hmm. These two of the, the five different mm -hmm. soil that we produce. We are the only one winery that produces five different Prosecco Superiore from five different kinds of soil. Right. And also, very... Yeah, and the, the crede and the cartice are the two main. Then we have another one, the, Re, the Reglio Rive di Guia, which is, is a, one of the Rive single vineyards that the consortium now allows to make. And well. And two others, which are still not having the market, but we have the, the plan to bring them and introduce them little by little, all of them. So, 
So, crede, 7.5 gram of sugar residual. Brut, as you know, very near the extra brut category because extra brut is 6 gram maximum yeah. of sugar. So, for 1.5, we are very near. But we want to stay in the brut category because uh, going down, uh, can, you can lose a, uh, some, some flavor, original flavor. Yeah. And, and also, I think, Prosecco, to what you were saying earlier, uh, needs some residual sugar to really emphasize the fruit part because here yeah. we're not talking about yeasty notes like the champagne, which the, the, the lower sugar actually makes them even more present. But here you need that fruit to be balanced with a little bit of, of sugar residual. So. Exactly, exactly. And you have in this uh, a lot of flower taste. Mm -hmm. A lot of flour, um, other kind of, of flour. So uh, this is very interesting for for the elegance, uh, for the elegance, uh, a little bit less fruity taste, but a lot more of a flower taste. Right. This very interesting. And this is fresh to, to see how the, the soil can uh, can uh, influence the, the quality. It's incredible because the hills are so near, 100 meters, 200 meters, but the, the kind of soil change because we are a geologic area with a, a lot of different um, geological times. So we start with the Cartizze that is 35 million years ago. And we the last line of hills is the Morenic soil that is only 6 million years ago. So if you look and we go together, you remember, Alessandro? Oh, yeah. And we saw from up in the helicopter that there is like, like lines of different uh, hills. Like yeah. a different... Uh, different formation, geologic yeah. formation, yeah. When you see from um, the helicopter, you, you understand immediately that uh, the Prosecco is different because different kind of soil with different exposition. Yeah. And another interesting thing is that we are in the middle from the Dolomites to the, the, the sea because mm -hmm. uh, 40 miles, 35 miles from Venice, and 35 miles from Cortina d'Ampezzo, that is considered the, the pearl of the Dolomites. Part of the Alps, yeah. And also an important thing to notice about the Bizot line, which Creda is part of, these are all vintage dated. So that all the fruit comes from the same year, which is very unusual for sparkling wine in general, but mostly for Prosecco. So it's all an expression of a specific vintage. And the one you have is the 18? Yes, yes. I okay, have it's a... the 18, yeah. Exactly. So, um, it's, not, it's not a blend of different vintages. It's just an expression uh -huh. of a specific vintage. Exactly. We also wait uh, to, to be ready with the new harvest. Uh, a lot of producers come out uh, after three months from the harvest. We wait six months because uh, we prefer to to have a more longer contact with the, the yeast in the tank before mm -hmm. starting with the second fermentation. And also, the second fermentation for us is more slow. Right. More slow. Uh, the fine bubbles that we obtain is because we wait. We wait for the quality. And that, 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 that where comes the creamy texture as well. Yeah, exactly. So the credit is a lot, is rich of uh, a lot of flower taste. And in the mouth mm, is the most crispy, with a lot of acidity, perfect for the oyster, as I say before, but per perfect with all the kind of fish. Uh, you can have a, a wonderful dinner or lunch with uh, fish. Also, a lot uh, with, um, with uh, Asian food is perfect, in general, Asian food. Yeah. And after the cartita that is considered the best, uh, the best uh, pairing with the Japanese cuisine. Uh, yeah. Talking about cartista, we get to the gem of Valdo Biadere. <clears throat> yes, exactly. Cartizze is considered the pearl of uh, Valdo Biadene. It's only one hill. So every six of every 600 battle of Prosecco, there is only one battle of cartizze. And the quality of cartizze is unique for one reason. Because thanks to this exposition, altitude, 
inclination of the, the vines, the same, the same grape of Crede, Geo, and all the other Prosecco that are in the, in the hills around the Cartizze Hill, mm -hmm. you can leave the grape for 10 days more, 15 sometimes days more in the vineyard before the harvest without losing acidity. You know that uh, the, the, the harvest, the time of the harvest, uh, looking at the acidity because we can't uh, go down too much uh, with the acidity. So we need uh, to have a, a good level of acidity. And in the other hills, we have to harvest at uh, one time. In Cartizze, we can wait a little bit more. And thanks to this uh, more time, 10 days, 15, the, the, the flavor from the skin come inside the juice inside the bunch. So the, the, the skin become very thin and we obtain a lot of flavor from the, from the, the, the skin of the bunch. And uh, this is the, the, the big difference. And uh, with a wonderful acidity, and thanks to this uh, inclination, a, a wonderful exposition to the sun, a very good wind, wind uh, uh, every day, mm -hmm. uh, we are exactly under the mountain, that is a big mountain, and behind the big mountain there are the Dolomites, and in front we can see sometime when there is a storm in the night, we can see also the, the, the water of the Venice Lagoon, that is at 35 kilometers. So, Cartice have no competition, and Cartice is an hill of 106 hectares, and uh, the, hill, the hill of Cartice is owned by 140 families, and uh, my family have uh, the, the vineyard in the top of the hill, so in the best position you, you went. I know to. well, yes. Exactly. We go, because we have a table in the top of the hill uh, in which we invite our uh, wine lovers, our friends, um, our customers, our, the journalists that come to visit us, and we always go in the winery for first, but we finish the party in the hill of Cartizze in the table that we have in the middle of the vineyard. Yeah, there's a beautiful view of, of, of Valdobbiadene from top of the hill because the highest point of Valdobbiadene. So. Exactly, exactly. Oh, so Cartizze uh, is the last grape to be harvested, and for this reason, is also the most sweet wine, sparkling mm -hmm. wine prosecco, because. Uh, the longer maturation creates more sugar residual. So traditionally, the Cartizze is more sweet of the other uh, Proseccos, only because in the past, uh, Cartizze, uh, when the climate was a little bit different, uh, was harvested in uh, end of October, beginning of uh, November. And uh, so when uh, was harvested with a lot of sugar uh, content, because uh, more longer maturation, start uh, the ferment uh, to ferment in the wineries. We're speaking about 100 years ago. And uh, there wasn't the control temperature like now, no? So the temperature of fermentation was the, the, the natural temperature of the wine, the fermenting is uh, grown in the, the, the temperature, but it's also the temperature outside of the weather. No? Mm -hmm. and, so in November, there was very cold temperature in Valdoviadene, and so, uh, start the fermentation, but at the end stop the fermentation without finish all the, the natural sugar. So remain a lot of natural sugar in, in, the, in the wine all the winter. And uh, all the winter the, the families have uh, the different uh, 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 barrels of, of, uh, of Prosecco from different mm -hmm. uh, vineyards, but the most uh, beautiful was uh, for all the winter the Cartizze because more sweet all the, the, the woman of the family, the, the baby, and the, everybody the, in the families prefer to bring the, the, the wine from the, the barrel of Cartizze because it was more sweet. So at the right. end of it was finished, the Cartizze. Huh. Huh. And this is the reason why this, everybody said, oh, there is no more Cartizze. I want this one. I have to wait the next harvest. No. <laughs> and this is the reason why everybody want uh, uh, to have Cartizze. In, a in piece this. of Cartizze, yes. <laughs> and even though you said there are 140 families that are owning a piece of it, how many actually bottling it? It's very few, right? Very few, because the major part of them uh, can stay relaxed all the year because they sell the grape at a very expensive price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
they didn't they don't need uh, to 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 create a battle line also because the everyone have a small piece of land right there's no reason to create a, there's no reason to bottling yeah brand they better just so, sell the wine yeah yeah uh, they grapes. Sell they sell to the single uh, wineries that buy the grape and uh, very few of them maximum in uh, 140 then there will be a maximum uh, 30 families that uh, bottle in the the, the cartiz and, and the other uh, 110 sell the grape to the yeah. copper and, and also uh, if you notice on the on the bottle there's no mention of prosecco like uh, uh, Valdobbiadene Superiore di Cartista di OCG, there's no mention of Prosecco in the denomination because it's something no. that goes beyond Prosecco. It's a special place. Yes, everybody in the, in the area call it uh, Cartizze. So yeah. there is no reason to call it the Prosecco. Is the Prosecco Superiore is the best result of the Prosecco Superiore, but the name is so so important in the history that uh, everybody decided to call it only Cartizze. So tell us, what do you find in this, uh, in this glass? I find a lot of, uh, of, uh, of flavor from fruit uh, to flower. Uh, from fruit, we find uh, a lot of uh, um, also apple, peach, mm -hmm. banana, pear. Definitely got more, more riper fruit compared to the other Proseccos that you tasted. A little bit more ripe fruit, yeah. exactly. And also an influence of uh, uh, tropical fruit, incredible mm -hmm. tropical fruit. Right. Tropical like fruit. This uh, like uh, mango, papaya. Mm -hmm. It's incredible how the nature can create a, a so different result from so, so very near the hills, no? Yeah. At the yeah. end. Mm. In the mount is an explosion of flavor. is incredibly, totally coherent with the what we had before. In the mount is the same, and very long, very creamy, very exciting and uh, crispy at the same time. It's an incredible, an incredible mix. Please try to to to, to drink a, a cartizze because is the best. Really, the best result that you can uh, match in the in the Prosecco world. And, and the great thing about Cartiz is that, um, to your point, it's got the higher acid sugar compared to the other Proseccos because here we are on the dry spectrum. is about twenty five grams of sugar, something like that. Right? Yes, twenty of sugar. Yeah, it? but at the same time, the acidity is able to really kind of counterbalance that um, that uh, that uh, sweetness. And is the wine is just fresh and it doesn't taste sweet, even though there's much more uh, residual sugar. So that's yeah. a beautiful thing about uh, Cartizze. Exactly, exactly. Beautiful residual sugar, but a lot of uh, good acidity that clean perfectly the mouth. So I love this uh, wine also with lobster, with uh, grilled shrimps. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. And the sweetness yeah. of the shrimps, yes, for sure. And also, uh, like an aperitif with, uh, for example, salami and prosciutto is perfect. Uh, I had, a, I remember a, a wonderful uh, day in Venice, uh, in uh, my restaurant in, in the island of uh, Venice, mm -hmm. in, you know, Venice. That I, Venice, Venice restaurant. I, uh, we had a wonderful weekend with, uh, you know, Oscar Farinetti of Italy. Of course. We drink uh, in a weekend uh, five, seven, five, six uh, bottles of cartizze only for the aperitif with salami and uh, prosciutto. The best but, prosciutto and culatello of, of Italy. And uh, we spend this incredible uh, emotion with uh, this wine. La dolce vita. La dolce vita, exactly. Yeah. Hopefully, very soon, we're going to be able to, all of us, even from the States, come to, this, to Italy and do some more La dolce vita over there. Uh, so we, you, with Bizol family, you have a good opportunity because we, c we can bring you from Venice in, in my island, in which uh, I have a, a wonderful vineyard of a single autochthon variety mm -hmm. of Venice, the Torona. It's a very rare wine, only 4,000 bottles. 
of mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we have 18 rooms in the in the island mm -hmm. uh, so it's a very nice destination with this uh, star mission restaurant and uh, after in uh, in uh, Valdobbiadene uh, where there is the history of my family in uh, the winery in the hills of uh, uh, of Cartizze, for example as as, uh, as I say before is an incredible experience because from the hill of Cartizze you can see all the Veneto region and after we can go together in another in another uh, property that we I have with Elisa in uh, in the volcanic area of Padua that is a uh, Euganian Hills the the winery is Maeli it's a wonderful boutique winery very small but this minerality of this soil is incredible at the end we can go at the highest vineyard in Europe I own the highest vineyard in Europe in Cortina d'Ampezzo is at 1380 meters that in the continent of Europe is actually the highest vineyard for sure. And so four destinations in the in the in the same region of Veneto, from the Dolomites to to Venice, uh, starting from Valdobbiadene, that is uh, the place in which I have my heart and where my family start uh, to grow the vines. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. I'm I really came to the. Th to Bisol, uh, Maeli, and Colugani, and Venissa, but I definitely want to come to see the, the vineyard in Cortina. Yes. Yes, it's incredible. Yeah. It was days ago and was incredible. In Cortina, you don't need any kind of, of uh, uh, antiparaxide because it's a natural sun, sunny uh, mm -hmm. uh, anti-bacteria. Anti no? It's incredible. At this altitude, you don't need any. You don't find the many, yeah. Yeah, but also in Badobiadene we don't use uh, the antiparaxide because we have a system that is very natural. Uh, we are to taking care of the vineyard with uh, a lot of biodiversity. We have a team that uh, take care of the number of mm -hmm. uh, plants and flowers and the insects that are inside the vineyard to create the biodiversity and the life underground. That is very interesting because if you know that when you see a vineyard, you see only the one meter mm -hmm. of rain, mm, centimeter that, has, uh, that is outside the, the soil. But under the soil, there are three meters of roots that uh, have a, a daily connection with the, the, the life that is underground. So we take care of this. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Zaluka. This was very educational. Uh, thank you. I'm looking forward to come visit you again. And uh, I look forward to seeing you here in the States, hopefully soon. We're, yeah. we're, we're about to get out of the lockdown in New York, hopefully. So yeah. we're going to slightly going back to the normal life. But yeah, um, yeah no, thanks again. And uh, to everybody, if they want, you want to follow Gianluca, Gianluca Bisol, or at uh, Bisol Prosecco, uh, the winery. If you have any follow-up questions, just reach out to them or to us. The, and uh, I there's a return. Like... There's a return of voice. Sorry. Of mine. See. Si. Okay. Quando parlo. Okay, now it's good. Uh -huh. All right. No, and um, yeah. So uh, also follow Venissa at, at uh, Venissa Tenuta, right? Yes. And Maeli at Maeli Wine. So the other two estates that uh, Gianluca mentioned. Um, and and, the, and there... the Cortina. Cortina is Vigna Maior Cortina. Ah, okay. I, I very small you, yeah. is a new, okay. a new, a new, um, a new profile. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take very a look. New. I'll definitely gonna start following that. Um, thank you. Uh, we'll be back soon with another uh, live tasting. But uh, have a great uh, day. Thank you, Gianluca. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you, everybody. Very, very, very nice. Uh, they write me a lot of messages like Todd, uh, Sweet, uh, uh, Jess, Sky. Uh, Thank you, Maria. And all our Luki, people. All our people. Most of Pietro, people. They miss Maria, you. Francesco, Papa Sum, Hugo. Eh, also yeah. Mariano, Buglioni. Mariano. Ah, ciao, Mariano. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea. It's Rami, a great group of producers that we have. All friends. Zondist. And uh, a lot of people, of all, not only from US, but uh, all, yeah. all around the world. Thank you very much for, and uh, thank you. I hope to see you personally, everybody, 
in the winery or in, in the city where you live. Or where I, I, I travel a lot normally. The, the last yeah. uh, month, not, but yeah. I have to, Nobody to, does. to rebring uh, all the time that we lose uh, of uh, visit to you. Thank you very much, Alessandro, and Wilson Dennis for support the Bisol in the best places in the US. You are the best, uh, the best importer. Huh? Thank you so much for your kind words, as always. All right. Thank you. Have a, ciao. Great, have a great day. Talk to you soon. Ciao. 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 ciao, 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 ciao.